Welcome to the Jongets Games teaser for Dominant Species Marine. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief overview of what the game is like to play, and if you'd like to learn more details, then please check out my tutorial where I teach all of the rules while the game is being played. You can find a link to that tutorial in the description of this video. Now, Dominant Species Marine is a 2-4 player game that usually takes between 90 and 150 minutes to play, and this is a sequel game to Dominant Species, which came out back in 2010. The games share some similarities, but this one is also significantly different, but both of these are set way back in the past, and each of the players is essentially controlling a specific type of animal. In Dominant Species Marine, this is a very uh, water-based uh, setting, and each of the players is going to be using their action pawns to take a wide variety of actions. These will let them manipulate the landscape, adding new tiles as well as elements, and they can also adapt themselves, adding new element tiles to your board so that your specific species cubes can thrive on new areas of the map. Now, in this game, players are going to be evolving all the time, and this is going to cause scorings of specific tiles. The player with the most species cubes on that tile is going to get more points than the second most, and so on, and players will also be able to activate very powerful evolution cards when this action is taken. There is a wide variety of these cards, and they can have gigantic impacts on the overall gameplay. Sometimes they give some points, and sometimes they'll wipe most of the cubes right off of the map. It really just depends on what card comes out at what time. So, as the game goes on, players are going to continue to take actions, and it's very important to note that when you place your action pawns down, you can never place them above your previously placed actions. This means you have to plan out your round as you make sure you don't go too far down if you need to do other actions before you spend an entire turn pulling all of your action pawns back. Now, there are ways to get more action pawns, and that involves dominating specific elements out there on the board. You do this by having more of that specific adaptation on your animal board, as well as having your cubes on a variety of of hexes on the map that also touch that element, and when you dominate that, you will get a new action pawn for it, which can break some of the standard placement rules, and also it's just another pawn that you can use. You will also gain control of that pawn until somebody else dominates it away from you, and if you have that control token at the end of the game, it can be worth a significant amount of points. So, as the game goes on, players are trying to jockey back and forth, uh, trying to have the most of their cubes on key tiles out there on the board, and also trying to make sure to activate various evolution cards that will be beneficial to them or just uh, to use them before their opponents can use them against you. Uh, so there are a lot of big swings that happen in this game and quite a lot to think about as you are expanding the landscape and you are also trying to take control of super hot vents that are emerging out of the water as well as the landmass because surviving on those spots can also be worth a ton of victory points to you. So obviously there is quite a lot going on in this game and I've only just touched on some of the things that are happening here. And remember, if you'd like to learn more about the things that I've talked about here, then please check out the tutorial that I made for it, where I teach all of these rules while the game is being played.